Happy Saturday, UFC Dern vs. Yon official picks and predictions next. Let's get it. Starting with our first pick tonight, I'm going with Guido Canetti. Now he's taking on Randy Costa, who despite having now the secret juice, I still think Guido Canetti will take this one. I don't care if Costa, like I wrote in my notes here, has the secret juice. I'm going with the ninja Guido Canetti. He's a plus 240 underdog. Could this be his last swan song? Who knows, but he hits hard. I don't think this goes three rounds. I think Kennedy knocks out Costa late in this fight. Taking a look at Kennedy. Nine wins, six losses. 42 years old. That's what I'm saying. It's his, it's potentially his last swan song. Four KO, TKO, three submission, two decision. He beat his last opponent, Chris Moutinho, before then he won a three-fight losing streak. I mean, a UFC veteran, a veteran of the MMA scene. His opponent, Randy Costa, the Zohan, 28 years old, six wins, three losses, so still relatively new to the game. Lost Adrian Yanez, who, let's be honest, Yanez, he's an absolute beast. Tony Kelly, eh. Before they went on two-fight win streak, Boston Salmon, Journey Newson. So I need to see more from him personally. Yes, came out of Cage Titans on an absolute tear. But in the UFC, it's just been kind of meh. I'm going with Kennedy, the old fart. Let's go. Plus 240. Lock it in. Next, we have Julia Stolierenko out of Lithuania against Chelsea Chandler. Julia, 29 years old, 10 wins, 6 losses. 6 KO, TKO, 9 submission, 1 decision, 2 draws. She beat Jessica Rose Clark in that nasty submission arm bar. It was right off the bat. Yeah, like I see here, 42 seconds. I believe she broke her arm. And I remember going into that fight, Jessica Rose Clark was saying that I'm defending arm bars. I'm defending, learning how to defend arm bars. And boom, right off the bat, UFC 276, she got submitted by Julia. Before then, Julia went on a three fight losing streak in the UFC. So coming out of Invicta, that was not what you wanted to see. She had to get a big win to stay in the UFC and she did against Jessica Rose Clark. Julia, primarily a grappler. As you can see, zero KO TKOs. As I just said, nine submissions, one decision. Going up against 28 year old Chelsea Chandler at a Stockton motherfucker. Four wins, one loss, one KO, TKO, one submission, two decisions. So a new fighter, and in my opinion, a better grappler than Julia. And let's be honest, Julia, all she really has is her grappling. Four win streak coming out of Invicta. And the opponents that she's beaten in Invicta, they're legit. Courtney King, Olivia Parker, uh, Mitzi Mary, even Carrie Kennison, who she lost to by unanimous decision. I mean, that, that was a hell of a pro debut matchup there so i'm going with chelsea chandler like i said i think she's got better grappling gracie jiu-jitsu easy submission or dominate or domination unanimous decision in my opinion like i mentioned and i just wrote this in my notes too her opponents in invicta have been awesome and julia i mean jessica rose clark is a is a fine fighter in many senses however she got her and submitted her with the one thing that she had to work on the most. So anyways, Chelsea Chandler, either unanimous decision or she ends this by submission. Next, we have Maxime Grishin, Maximus, against uh, Philippe, is it Linz? 38 years old, 32 wins, 9 losses for Maxime Grishin. 16, 16 KO, TKO, 6 submissions, 10 decisions, 2 draws. At light heavyweight, he's an absolute beast. He's a veteran of the game, 38 years young. Beat William Knight, UFC 271. Before then, traded wins and losses. Lost to Justin Deco's, uh, Jacoby. Beat... You know, a Russian light heavyweight fighter. I'm not even going to pretend to pronounce his name here. By TKO. 
Lost to Ty Burra, draw to Jordan Johnson, uh, beat Jordan Johnson, and had a two-fight win streak in the PFL. So it's what PFL, WFCA, M1, and a pretty long UFC career too, all things considered late in his 30s. I and mean, he's got four fights, this is his fifth fight in the UFC, so you can call him a veteran now in this promotion. Looking at Felipe Linz, 15 wins, 5 losses, 37 years old. 8 wins by KO, TKO, 4 submissions, 3 decisions. Uh, he won his last fight, but before then was on a 2-fight losing streak to Arlovsky and Tanner Boser. Before then was pretty perf- er, was pretty impressive fighting out of the PFL, where he racked up a 4-fight win streak before being signed to the UFC. A veteran of the game as well. I mean, he's fought in Bellator, PFL, UFC, so arguably the three best promotions. However, for this one, I'm going Maxim Grishin. I think he's got a good chin. I think he's beaten solid opponents as of late. He's even looked good in his losses. And Linz is heavy, less well-rounded, not as quick, and, and, and might get cracked, so let's be honest. These are light heavyweights. They like to throw down, and I think... Grishin's chin and just general toughness and cardio are going to win him this fight. Next, Christoph Jocko against Brendan Allen. Christoph Jocko, 24 years old, or sorry, 33 years old, 24 wins, 5 losses, 6 KO, TKO, 1 submission, 17 decisions at 185. He's fighting out of American top team. He won his last two fights. Gerald Mershart, Misha Chikunov, before then lost to Sean Strickland. Sean Strickland's on the up and up. Tremendous striker in his own right. Big Eric Anders, Mark andre Barriou, and Alan Emadovoski. Decent fighter before then. So he's been in the UFC for a while. Wow, he's been in the UFC since 2013. His best win streak was between 2014 and 2016. Then went on a three-fight losing streak. Three-fight win streak. Lost Sean Strickland. And here we are. Looking at Brendan Allen. All in Allen. 26 years old. Really? I feel like this guy's been in the UFC for a lot longer. Maybe he has. We'll, we'll scroll down and see. 19 wins, 5 losses. 5 KO, TKO, 10 submissions, 4 decisions. He And he's out of Sanford MMA. Wow. So two solid gyms. Be Jacob Malkoon. Sam Alvey lost to Chris Curtis. I mean, and he also lost to Sean Strickland. He got a win against Kyle Dawkins, though, two years ago, which is a solid win. He beat Kevin Holland as well. He beat Aaron Jeffrey on Contender Series, which got him into the UFC. Uh, this one's an interesting one. Like, I'm not too high on either of these two guys. But if I'm going to have to pick one, I'm going with Brendan Allen. I think he's got better grappling defense. I think it'll be a close fight. I think Allen just does more damage throws more strikes is on the offense a little bit more where jocko is probably just going to chase the submission so going brendan allen probably unanimous decision next we got joaquin silva against jesse ronson joaquin silva 11 wins three losses 33 years old out of brazil these are lightweights folks 155 pounder six ko tko three submissions two decisions he's on a two fight losing streak in the ufc lost to nasser at hakparast he lost to ricky glenn he did beat jaron gordon but before then lost to uh vince pichel coming into the ufc though three fight win streak between 2015 and 17 for the ufc fought in shoot brazil afc the only two really recognizable and respected leagues on the regional scene before becoming pro uh, he went two and one, and all three of those fights were on the Ultimate Fighter Brazil season four. So there you go. There you go. One of the Ultimate Fighter alumni. Moving over to the body snatcher, Jesse Ronson out of London, Ontario, Canada. Let's freaking go. 21 years old, or sorry, 36 years old. I keep doing that. 21 wins, 11 losses, 10 KO, TKO, seven submission, four decision. He lost his last fight pretty... He got manhandled in that one by... Who was it here? Rafa Garcia. I actually watched this. I was gutted. Uh, lost in the second round. For then, no contest to Nicholas Dalby. He did beat Troy Lampson in BT9 Rampage. And then had a pretty good run before then in TKO ACB. He lost both of his fights out of the PFL. 
one in BTC, and then the UFC signed him. Um, and currently zero one and no contest in the UFC. He likes to swang and bang. Um, he was with the UFC in 2013 to 14, lost all three of his fights. Uh, Michel Parizers, uh, Francisco Trinaldo, which funny enough is on the card in the co-main event tonight, and Kevin Lee. Look, no bias whatsoever. But we're going with the Canadian. Let's go. Let's go. Look, this one's a pick from the heart, not from the head, as the body snatcher is not a good grappler. So the Brazilian with his jiu-jitsu definitely could cause him... Oh, it just could be a rough night for Rosen, and it could end quickly like before, and it could be the end of his UFC run yet again. However, he does have the striking advantage. He loves to swang and bang, and if he clips the Brazilian on his way in or anything like that, I do think there's enough power there to knock him out. Good night, Jim Kite. Oh, Canada, let's go. The body snatcher, Jesse Ronson. Next, we have some heavyweights. Ilir Latifi, the sledgehammer against Alexi Olinik. I mean, these guys are both veterans of the game. They've been around for a while. Latifi out of Sweden, 39 years old, 15 wins, 8 losses, 6 KO, TKO, 4 submissions, 5 decisions. He beat Tanner Boser in his last fight, although that was a very, very tight and close split decision. I had the Canadian winning that one personally. Before then, lost to Derek Lewis, lost to Ozemir, lost to Corey Anderson, beat OSP and Tyson Pedro. Lost to Ryan Bader before then. I mean, they're heavyweights. He's got some power. I've never thought Latifi was anything special, though I respect, you know, his his hands. His opponent, Alexi Olinik, the boa constrictor, 45 years old and definitely starting to look at, look at his UFC record, though. 60 wins, 16 losses, 8 KO TKO, 47 submissions five decisions both of these heavyweights do like to move i think olinic though has more cardio clearly he beat jared van Dera and actually looked pretty pretty good in that fight before they went on the three fight losing streak Derek lewis chris dockets sergey spivak three you know top contenders in the division beat verdum on verdum's way out beat maurice green back in 2020 and he has some solid, solid fights in the UFC. I mean, he lost to Walt Harris, lost to Alistair Overeem, but he beat Mark Hunt, beat Junior Albini, lost to Curtis Blades, beat Travis Brown. I mean, this guy's been around for so long. Not only in the UFC since he's been here since 2014, but if you just... He's got 60 fucking wins. Look at this shit. This guy's been around forever, folks. M1, I mean, KSW. And he's a submission specialist. I mean, I'm going with the boa constrictor i absolutely love watching this guy fight and at 45 years old i'm just i'm just rooting for the old fart at this at at this stage of his career but in respect to him he's still got a little gas in the tank and i think he's got way more in the tank than latifi he's stronger he can hurt latifi the longer the fight goes the worse it is for latifi i think submission late second round early third round mike davis against vishaslav borashev Beast Boy, 29 years old, 9 wins, 2 losses, 7 KO, TKO, 1 submission, 1 decision. He's running a 2-fight win streak in the UFC, beating Thomas uh, Gifford and Mason Jones. 1 by KO punch, 1 by unanimous decision. Lost to Gilbert Burns before that, went on 2-fight win streak. Well, oh, that loss to Sadiq Yusuf. Uh, came to the House of Fame and Square Rings. Uh, lost in the Contender Series, but ended up coming back to the UFC after dominating in square ring. So there you go. There you go. He had only one amateur uh, fight in Breakthrough MMA 15. Likes to throw those bombs though. Mike Davis, the Beast Boy. As we look at Slava Borshev, really fun fighter to become a fan of. I've liked watching him personally. His personality tra trains out of uh, Alpha Male. He's a contender series product. Six wins, two losses. Five KO, TKO, zero submissions, one decision. Still has a lot to learn on the ground. Lost to Mark uh, DeCasey and USC on ESPN, 33 Blades Dawkins. But before then, went on a four-fight win streak. Two of which UFC, Dana White Contender Series, we beat Chris Duncan. And then also beat 
Dakota Bush. Punch of the body, too. I remember watching that freaking liver shot. In Titan FC, two-fight win streak. And went one and one in LFA as well. I really like this fighter. And what I was uh what I heard actually listening to Ariel Hawani's show is that Boroshev not only trains at Alpha Male, but he teaches striking at Team Alpha Male. So though being a young still MMA fighter, despite being 30 years old, he's already at such a high level where he's teaching classes at that respected gym. I am going with Borshev. He needs redemption. I think his striking is insanely good. His opponent likes to strike as well, so they're going to stand. But I do think that Borshev has the better chin, and I think he's got the better power. I think he's got the better talent, despite Mike Davis also being a good striker. I think this one stand or stay standing, and I think actually Borshev wins this one. Late second round, TKO. Next, we have John Castaneda, the sexy Mexi, against Daniel Gustavo Santos. John Castaneda, 19 wins, 5 losses, 30 years old. 8 KO, TKO, 6 submissions, 5 decisions. He's on a two-fight win streak right now. Beat Miles Johns, which that was a hell of a fight. Miles Johns is no pushover. Beat him in an arm triangle choke. Beat Any Wineland, who Any Wineland was on his way out, but still, hey. Beat a veteran. TKO punches. Lost to Nathaniel Woods. Solid fighter. Beat Marcelo Rojo before even entering the UFC. So comes into the UFC and goes up against Nathaniel Wood in 2020. I mean, that's a hell of an, an opponent, right? Then goes on two-fight win streak after that. He's still a young fighter in this promotion. Actually had a win on Dana White's Contender Series. I imagine didn't get a contract. Goes back to Combate Americas and just does really well. Three and two and then gets eventually signed by the UFC. Well, and the amateur C needed pretty good too. Five and one. All right, looking at his opponent, Daniel Gustavo Santos. Still pretty new to MMA. Eight and two, four KO, TKO, one submission, three decision. He's 27 years old. Lost his last fight before then went on a two fight win streak in Future FC and WEF. He's only had one fight in the UFC. He lost. His opponents in the other promotions are meh. I mean, th this seems like a really, really tough matchup for Daniel Gustavo Santos. Honestly, folks, easy win for the sexy Mexi. John Castaneda is going to absolutely dominate this fight. Um, he's way more experienced. He's way more well-rounded. His last win, he looked just tremendous. He's at a full camp because I believe uh, his win before that, I believe in Wy the Wineland fight, he was last... It was kind of last minute. It was short notice. One of his recent fights has been short notice anyway. So he has a full camp for this one. He's way way more talented than Santos. Way more of a well-rounded fighter. And I think he's either going to dominate him, like unanimous upon unanimous decision, or he knocks his ass out or submits him in second round. Next, we have Sadiq Yusuf against Don uh, Shanus. Sadiq Yusuf, 29 years old, 12 wins, 2 losses, 6 KO, TKO, 0 submission, 6 decision. He won his last fight against Alex Caceres. Unanimous decision. Alex Caceres is, you know, a veteran of the game, too. That was a pretty close fight, back and forth fight. Uh, lost to Arnold Allen, solid fighter. Beat Andre Feely, beat Gabriel Benitez, Shayon Morales. Before then, our names of note. He did, he did beat Mike Davies, funny, uh, in the contender series to get into the UFC. So in the UFC, I mean, solid record. You, you cannot knock him for his UFC record. He is two, was he two, four, uh, five and one in the UFC. And he lost to Arnold Allen, who's on a what, 11 fight win streak or some, something crazy like that. 10 fight win streak. Top contender in the 145 division. Sadiq Yusuf, I like him. Like I said, he likes to knock people out. Um, and he can go the distance. The one thing about Sadiq Yusuf is his chin isn't the strongest. Looking at Don Chianis, though, shameless Chianis. <laughs> 12 wins, three losses. The 31 year old has eight KO, TKO, two submissions, two decisions. He's on a hell of a win streak right now. However, he's making his UFC debut. He's fought in Cage Titan, FAC, and Bellator of notes. He actually won both his Bellator fights and was very, very successful in Cage Titan. The one thing about Giannis, though, his last opponents have been cans, folks. 
Like, look at this. Seven and seven. All right, 16 and nine. That's not too bad. 16 and 106. So some interesting matchmaking here. He's got power in his fists. So I believe that's what the promotion is hoping to see in this matchup. I think Sadiq Yusuf win wins this one. Flying fucking carpets, folks. Uh, like I said, yeah, Dawn has crushed cans despite having power. Sadiq Yusuf wins this one if he doesn't get cracked. Easy. Brenny Barcelos against Trevin Jones. Barcelos is 35 years old. 16 wins, 3 losses, 8 KO, TKO, 2 submissions, 6 decisions. He's pretty well-rounded 135-er. And he's 35 years old, so he's been around the game for a very long time. He's got to be motivated coming to this one, too, off of two decision losses. Before then, though, in the UFC, went on a 2-4-5 fight win streak. Dominated RFA before that. And fought in Shudo Brazil. So, solid career thus far. Just in a little bit of a funk. And to be honest, his worst funk he's ever been in in his professional career. Looking at his opponents, Trevin Jones. Five-star Trevin Jones. 13 wins, 8 losses, 32 years old. 3 KO, TKO, 4 submissions, 6 decisions. So, well-rounded fighter. Won no contest as well. Doesn't have, like, that straight-up knockout power. Um, I, I would honestly say that Barcelos probably has even more striking power, despite him being comfortable taking the fight to the ground as well. He's on a two-fight losing streak, so he's just as motivated. Lost to Javid Basharat, who is a hell of an opponent. So I would say lost to two... And Kakaramon. Yeah, lost to two uh, more dangerous opponents than Barcelos did recently, but uh, this one's tough. This one's tough. Let me refer to my notes here. What do I have? What do I have? I have Trevin Jones. I say I think it's going to be a scrap. I think they're both going to stand. I don't think it's going to go to the ground. I don't think either of them are going to knock each other out. So both motivated. It's going to be a scrap. It might be a might not be the most technical fight. Um, both can take damage. Um, both need to check leg kicks because they both have solid leg kicks. So I think this is just going to stand. I think it's going to be a messy brawl. Both of them are going to be more motivated by heart and needing to get that win rather than make it look pretty. Cool main event of the evening. Randy Rude Boy Brown. I really love watching this fighter. I really enjoy walk watching the Jamaican fight. 32 years old. He's in his athletic prime. 15 wins, 4 losses, 6 KO, TKO, 5 submissions, 4 decisions. He's so well-rounded, but he's got some freaking power in those punches, folks. Um, yeah, I've watched all three of these. He beat Alex Oliveira, beat Jared Gooden, beat Kalen Williams. Lost Vicente Luque. I mean, these aren't the biggest names, but just watch him fight. Just watch him fight. And yeah, he's lost to some bigger names. Vicente Luque, Bilal Mohamed, Nico Price to a certain degree. And a lot of the fighters he has been beating aren't the aren't the biggest. I mean, Alex Oliveira in 2021, sure, he still had some pep in his step. Jared Gooden's a pretty good fighter too. But you folks know what I mean. He's on the up and up. You know, this is he's, he's co he's in the co-main event. I think he's got a lot of talent, and there is a lot of room for this fighter to grow. No easy opponent there, despite his age. This guy's the ageless wonder. Francisco Trinaldo, 28 wins, 8 losses, 9 KO, TKO, 5 submission, 14 decision. He's on a two-fight win streak. And yeah, he beat Dwight Grant and Danny Roberts. For a 44-year-old in the UFC, those are solid wins, okay? Lost to Salikov. Salikov's fucking awesome. Beat Jai Herbert. That's another good fight. Beat Bobby Green somehow. That's another good fight. Beat John McDessey. These are all from 2019. To 2020. So this is this is recent. He was in his 40s. Lost Hernandez. I mean, he's got wins over Paul. F I mean, yeah, we could go through this guy's whole career. I mean, he's an absolute legend. Though age is catching up to him. We saw in the later rounds of his last fight, him start to get tired. Trinado's still a great test for Randy, Randy Brown, and this is a great test for himself as well. Despite saying that, though, I'm giving this one to Randy Brown. He's tough as hell, well-rounded. Great striking, younger. Trinado is dangerous, though. He's tough, and he's been uh, beating pretty good opponents. So the one thing about Trinaldo, he's got that knockout power. So does Brown, though. Whose chin is going to take more? 
or who's going to take this to the ground when one of them realizes that the other has the striking edge. We shall see. I'm thinking Randy Brown takes this one. Ronaldo's so tough, even at 44, so I'm going unanimous decision. And here we go, folks. The main event of the evening, Mackenzie Dern against Xiaonan Yan. 12 wins, 2 losses for Mackenzie Dern, the Brazilian jiu-jitsu ace. An absolute prodigy when it comes to Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I watched her defeat Musumeci's sister, like, with ease, folks. 12 wins, like I said, 2 losses, 29 years old, 7 submissions, Five decisions. She beat Tisha Torres in a very close fight, I, I I will say. Lost to Marina Rodriguez, a solid opponent before then, beat Nina Nunes, beat uh, Verena Janjaroba, beat Randa Marcos, and beat Hannah Cypher. So decent opponents in there. Lost to Amanda Ribas and, you know, undefeated before then. She's on the up and up. She's a marketable star. She's pretty. Her striking's getting better. She's in her prime. And she has another main event here at UFC Facebook One. I mean, UFC Vegas 61. Her opponent, the Fury out of China, Xiaonan Yan. 15 wins, 3 losses, 33 years old. 7 KO, TKO, 8 decisions. So what a matchup this is. Pure striker against pure jujitsu slash grappler. She's on two fight losing to Marina Rodriguez and Carla Esparza. Now, these are two important things to note. Rodriguez likes to grapple. Esparza, the champion, a wrestler. Esparza, you know, beat her TKO punches. I mean, ground and pound, ground and pound, and split decision for Marina Rodriguez in a close one. Before then, went on a tear in the UFC. One, two, three, four, five fight win streak. Sorry, six fight win streak with some solid opponents: Angela Hill, Pereira, Karan, uh, Carolina. I mean. Gedalia, I mean, these, these are all solid opponents too. So she earned this uh, this high-profile matchup against Mackenzie Dern. My question is, is her submission defense, her takedown defense, and her grappling, just general baseline grappling, has it improved enough to even compete with someone who has the tools like Mackenzie Dern? This one's going to be interesting. It, it's either going to be, in my opinion, Ner Dern gets knocked out, or... Jan gets submitted. And you know what? I think Dern submits her. Look, it's, it's striker versus grappler, like I said. But Dern is getting better on the feet, even if it's just defense, having a good guard and getting into the pocket to get her trips down. Even though she's not like a crazy good wrestler and she's a grappler at, at, at the end of the day, she has no issue getting her opponents to the ground, even if it's dirty. Even if it's not a double leg takedown or single leg or, or grabbing the leg off the cage. She'll clinch and she'll she'll make it do. She'll do a trip or literally just pull you to the ground and pull guard because that's what she does. She's so comfortable fighting from her guard. Is Jan comfortable fighting in someone's guard like that after being pulled to the ground, you know, intentionally? It's going to be interesting to see. It all comes down to Jan's ground defense. I think uh, unanimous decision for Dern, nah, it's going to be a submission for a Dern, or it's going to be a knockout for Yan, and my final prediction is Dern. So there you go, folks. That is our predictions for UFC Facebook 1. I mean, UFC Vegas 61, Dern versus Yan. Let me know what you think of my picks and predictions in the comments below. Join us in an hour's time all day for UFC Dern vs. Yon. They won't let you in the Apex, so we'll let you on the City Life Project YouTube channel. Like the video again, drop a comment in the live chat for any of the live streams, and right after UFC Vegas 61, Dern vs. Yan, we will jump right back on the live stream on this channel, the City Life Project YouTube channel for Bellator 286 main card. AJ McKee's fighting, Pitbull's fighting. No, they're not fighting each other, but they are the main and co-main event. Let me know if you like these videos, these picks and predictions. Check out our vlogs, check out our live streams, and we'll see you on the next one.